Hey y'all, uh, I have kind of a, it was going to be a longer term project, it's going to take place over probably a month or more, um, but I, uh, long time I've wanted these, and I finally ordered some, Zone, Zone Mortalis tiles, I have the 16 of them I believe for a 4x4 board, and I'm actually going to do a whole video, uh, series of videos uh, from this, just out of the packaging, still covered in dust and stuff through washing, uh, painting, and getting all the details and stuff on there. So this is going to be a beginning to end project. It will take place, like I said, over several weeks or months, depending on how motivated I am to paint this. Uh, I have a bit of a unique color scheme I think I'm going to use for the whole project. Uh, if you've seen any of the other battle reports and stuff you've seen, I have a couple buildings and stuff with corrosion all over them. Um, a rusted kind of corroded look. I'm actually going to make the whole set of tiles look like that for two reasons. One, I think it's unique. I, I haven't seen a lot like that. And two, to be honest with you, there's 16 giant tiles for, to paint and uh, it seemed like the easiest way to paint them all. So uh, I'm going to do that. It's a step-by-step -step process. When you come back, uh, lighting will be a little worse because I'll be in my utility room, but I'm going to go through washing the tiles and then we're going to go through, uh, you know, base coating, painting all the different layers on there, finish up with hopefully a nice board laid out and uh, get some games on there. Thanks. All right, I am back. I am down in my utility room trying to uh, find a spot to get all these, these buckets filled. I'm going to try not to pan around too much and just show off all the junk I've accumulated over the years. But that's how it goes. This is where I have access to utility sink. It's mid-November here. A little cold to be trying to do this outside. But that's normally what I would do if I was going to try and fill up a project this big, just use the garden hose outside. But, doing working with what I have. So, I have all the tiles stacked up right here. And obviously I have the buckets. I am going to put um, simple green in the buckets. There we go. Just got some basic simple green, super cheap, nothing expensive. If you're looking for something that's going to degrease. Uh, a lot of people, there's a lot of uh, different information about washing um, Forge World Resin, I have always done it. I've never not washed a resin piece. However, there were there were a couple times where I washed them, but not very well. And uh, there were some spots on them where paint, I had a lot of trouble getting paint to stick. So I don't mess around with it. I wash them every time. I have talked to people that said they never wash them. So we're washing them. So what I'm going to do is I am going to fill up these buckets. I think that would be a very boring thing for you to watch. So when you come back, the buckets will be filled up. I'm going to put about a cup of uh, degreaser in each one of these bins. Um, that should be all that's needed, maybe even a little more than needed, but better safe than sorry. Back in a bit. All right, here we are, two full buckets. I did manage to get water all over everything, uh, except for me, the camera, and the electrical panel. So uh, that's a win in my book. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put these guys in here. The goal is to have the water deep enough that it submerges them. Um, as best you can. Uh, most of the resin I've used does float a little bit, but you want to get all of it covered in water if possible. So I'm just putting these in, lining them all up. Got a whole pile. I'm not going to show you putting them all in, so I will be back and uh, finish up this segment. All right, here we are. They are all in the buckets. Uh, fun with physics. Don't forget about water displacement. If you put all these tiles in there, it's going to push the water up a little further. They may overflow. I am actually going to go ahead and put the lids on. Obviously not really necessary. There's the water overflowing physics I was telling you about. Um, it's not necessary, but it will help keep them um, down in the water. So that's going to be it. When I come back, we will pull these all out, rinse them, and wash them. And we're back. Uh, we this has been soaking. Actually, it's been soaking for a couple days. Um, probably only needs 24 hours, maybe less. Um, I have a plastic bristle bristle brush here. Um, not super stiff bristles. They're pretty bendy. You don't want a steel brush or a metal brush of any kind. Pretty soft. And then I have a bucket of clean-ish water. It was just a bin I had laying around. So. There might be some particles floating in there. Mostly what we're looking for is just to rinse off all of the green stuff. So I'm going to pull one of these out. 
I'm just going to take the brush, trying to get all of the corners, the nooks and the crannies, cracks and crevices. I'm going to dip it in here, rinse all of the soap solution off, shake all the water off. That one's done. I'm just going to move on to the next one. Again, I'm not scrubbing real hard. Just really want to make sure all of the soap and the mold release agent is off of here. Uh, if you don't, you could potentially be painting this and then all of a sudden just have areas start flaking off. I have had that. I had a rhino. Um, I didn't quite wash well enough. I did wash it, but I didn't wash it well enough. And uh, it started flaking off. Luckily, I was able to fix it with some paint on primer. But um, this is a quick, easy step. I mean, the biggest pain in the butt with this is the giant bins you need for it. But other than that, it's not that bad. So uh, I'm not going to make you guys watch me brush all of these off. I'm just going to do the same thing for the next 14 tiles. And uh, then we can come back and start spray painting them. Thanks.